I am so excited for today's conversation. My name is Christian Saab. This is Derek Roy from Community Living Essex County. And today we are talking about disabled people in the workplace and all the misconceptions about it. Uh, we're going to talk about three things today. One, the different types of disabilities that are out there. Um, two is everyone who's in my shoes, a business owner or someone who's running a business. And when someone approaches them saying, you know, why not a dis disabled person in the workplace? really unbuckling and breaking down the, the myths and the stereotypes. And then three is what's actually out there to make this a super awesome process. So Derek, why don't you just introduce yourself and Community Living Essex County, please, and, and we'll get right into it. Absolutely. Thanks, Christian. Happy to be here. Uh, so my name is Derek Roy. I oversee our employment services, Career Compass. We are uh, an organization that supports people with intellectual disabilities outside of the city of Windsor, across the county. We work with families as well to provide supports and ensure that their family members and loved ones get the supports they need to be inclusive, active members of their community. Fair enough. And now I know you and I have talked about this ahead of time and, and um, it's, it's a very interesting world that is very unknown. No one knows anything about it. They know, we all know that, you know, disabled people exist, but like, where do they work? What do they do? How do they make a living? All this stuff. So, so why don't we first tap into the different levels of disabilities that are out there? Because automatically you go up to someone saying to them, you know, disabled person in the workplace, I, you automatically go to the extreme. At least I do. And I'm sure there's people out there that are like me where it's like, you know, you think of completely crippled or you think of completely like mentally disabled, right? So um, what are the different ranges of the different types of disabilities out there, different people that are out there? Yeah, no, that's a great question. That's certainly something that the Career Compass team, we, we work with employers, help them understand. Um, it's one of those myths that we really try to dispel. So when somebody thinks disability, they think, you know, really a profound disability. Um, but it, disability covers a wide range, right? It could be somebody who might have uh, a mobility device, right? Could be a wheelchair. Um, could include somebody who might have vision issues, hearing issues. Could include somebody who has an intellectual disability, and that's primarily the folks that we support. Um, so there's this concept too of invisible disabilities, right? Sometimes you could look at somebody and not know that they have a disability. So there's, there really is a, a wide range of, of disability and for businesses and workplaces, I think there's this uh, mentality that when you hire on somebody with a disability, that turns into spending money, that turns into accommodations and uh, you know having to, to make changes here and there. And really that's not true. That's really not true. Um, I've been working in employment services for oh, a long time now, <laughs> probably uh, I think since 2015, almost 10 years now. I don't think we've ever had to assist an employer with any kind of physical accommodations, no like, you know, widening the door frames for a wheelchair, nothing like that. Give, give me some examples, like you mentioned invisible disability, give me some examples of the types of people, like describe them, maybe average age, what kind of disabilities, what are the, give me, give me like, let's make this super simple. Okay. What, what are those people that are out there? Yeah, so all ages, to be honest. So okay. as an organization, we support people uh, all ages. Okay. From ch uh, children to children, all the way to adults, all until, all the way till end of life. Okay. Yep. So we kind of, we do the, the whole spectrum. Um, and it really depends on the person. You can have a conversation with somebody, but they might, um, present their disability in little ways. Uh, they may not have very strong literacy skills. Um, they, really? That counts as a disability? So some, depending, it, it, depending on I, how I want to go into the specifics on this. I really want to, so in, it's, explain that to me. Give me the, the examples, like what qualifies someone to being disabled? You meant, there's one that's so, okay. Like, so for you know what I mean? disability, yeah. um, specifically that would mean somebody having an IQ of 70 or below. An IQ of 70 or so below. So they would have to have that diagnosis. Okay. From What's the normal person? Normal person's IQ, do you know? Oh. 70? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can, no, can you I Google think, that for us, Alex? Yeah, I, I want to know that. I want to know how hard that is. <laughs> I like, I'm, oh, I'm just, that? I'm curious. 
85 okay. and 100. I was going to say 100, but I. 70 or below. Okay. okay. And we get this tested as kids. The uh, IQ. How do we how do we get someone's so IQ? Typically, what happens is when somebody's in school, that's where um, you know deficits might present themselves. Okay. So it's usually educators will get families involved and, and encourage them to have their their loved ones, family members, their, you know, to be assessed. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where is, it, is this where going. we kind of bring in the whole ADHD thing falls in that category or dyslexia but, uh, or yeah like, so those are that... disabilities those are learning disabilities okay yeah so uh, but intellectual disabilities are specifically an IQ of seventy or below IQ of seventy and below yeah perfectly healthy person physically yep. just yep. IQ is low yep yep and, okay. and again like I can think of several people we support that we're connected to um, but they present you know where. They present very differently which which could when we're relating it to our topic here of in the workplace all right their iq is low but they could be the best landscaper on the planet exactly exactly right and, and that's kind of the thing where you know again a lot of the people that we're connected to uh, people with disabilities really want to be part of their community right mm. they want to they're motivated to get okay. up there and work and give back and just contribute, right? So let's keep tapping in because I want to see different exams. So we see there's the IQ disability. So that could, does that normally translate to that person's maybe more general labor, more physical where, hey, you can, you know, don't put them in front of a massive Excel sheet, put them in front of something that is maybe more physical or something that doesn't require that where you get a perfectly amazing employee. Right. And that, yep. do you see a lot of that? Yeah. Yeah. For the bulk, I would say, but as technology has really become part of uh, school, we're definitely seeing a lot of job seekers that we're connected to a lot more tech savvy. Mm -hmm. um, so I know I mentioned, I can think of somebody who um, literacy skills may not be their strongest suit, um, but like can, knows his way around. Uh, yeah. a smartphone like nobody's business and instead of texting uses the voice to text right uses yeah. different apps to, to support him to be independent yeah so that he can work around his disability right so you wouldn't even know that, as that if one. they were sitting with us exactly. right now you wouldn't even know it exactly. unless they brought it up and then the flip side i can think of somebody else we're connected to who is very proficient in typing very analytical could show me up <laughs> In Excel, probably. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's just it's just what is it that they're actually good exactly. at? Exactly. Versus and that's everything else that the system says you're being measured by. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where having the appropriate services and supports is really essential because okay. that's where, for example, the Career Compass team, we get to know those job seekers, right? We get yeah. to know exactly what their strengths are because it's such a spectrum. What their yep. strengths are, what their interests are, and match those to job opportunities in the community. Okay, so, so why don't we go to the flip interest. side? Yep. So there's the non-physical disabilities where it's more on the, the the mental, the IQ side. Okay, so so where you have perfectly able-bodied person. Mm -hmm. um, what about the other side of the coin? Of okay, this is a physical disability. Mm -hmm. How do we? What type of disabilities are out there where, you know, you could see, you know, the different ranges and how it could be. How do you accommodate for someone like that in the workplace? Yeah, so there's, you know, MS, multiple sclerosis. Um, that's kind of a big one that we're, you know, a lot of the folks that we're connected to do have that diagnosis yeah. as well. Um, so they might be in an electric wheelchair. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I can think of anybody that's in uh, a push wheelchair. I think everybody that we support. This day and age, I feel like everybody's yeah, got Yeah, I one. think so. And again, <laughs> there's, the, you know, there's opportunities for people to access funding to be able to get those uh, mobility devices that might, they might need. Um, but yeah, again, kind of going back to the, the idea of accommodation equals spending money, mm -hmm. not true. Um, most times workplaces are, are you know, accessible, um, you know, again, depending on the age of the building. I know there's some buildings out there where it's steps, no yeah. elevators, can't get to the second floor. So those can be barriers for people. So that's the, that's the wheelchair side. But yeah. what about, I imagine, blind people, deaf people, that's also... Yep. part of that I want to see like all yep. the different types of physical so you've got does someone with like one leg count like an injury yeah that would technically be that yep. still like what's yep. the minimum qualification in your world of this person has a physical disability is there is there anything like a measurement there um, that I don't know 
that I could speak to exactly. I know they would count as somebody with a disability, somebody with diabetes would be considered having a disability. Really? Yes. Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. And they're in your program just because they got what type one or type two diabetes? No, no. So because we're a community living organization, yeah. we are mandated to only support people with an intellectual disability. That said, from your program, okay, from but, our program, yep. Oh, but, outside of that, but some people with an intellectual disability may have other diagnoses as well, like MS. Okay. They may have a learning disability, like ADHD. Yeah. Um, so they may also have they may have their an intellectual disability, but also. Um, diagnosis of diabetes as well pending yeah. right but so your area deals with a lot more of intellectual disability. intellectual disabilities yeah. and then why don't we just stay on that then okay. so then let's um so then i guess going into it the next step of this so we've unbuckled that all right there's these big ranges of actually then staying on intellectual we talked about the stuff that's the invisible yep well what about the extreme Okay. What about on the extreme side? Because we still got to help those people too. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So tell me about the extreme side before we shift into the next part of this. So the the not invisible mm -hmm. intellectual, this is yeah. the opposite spectrum. Yep. yep. Tell me, give me some examples of some people that you've dealt with where it's like they have this, whatever it may be. And you know, how, how where, where could they be very helpful to people like us? Yep. So, in those sorts of cases, uh, they will require a lot more support, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, they'll require a lot more um, I guess self discovery, getting to know them. Um, we, for what us. What would be, to beforehand, just yep. before, what's, what would be the type of disabilities there? Like, what, the extremes, what would that look like? Um, so, what it would look like? Uh, it Is could this be, like autistic? Is this, um, you know, like can't really not, speak at that point? Like, how does it look like? There's some, there's some people with autism that don't speak traditionally, like use words like us, okay. but they're able to use an iPad and communicate perfectly okay. using apps that way. But there's other people with autism that can communicate okay. very well verbally. Um, again, like there's this, this label, but it's such a spectrum of everything. So mm -hmm. that's where the supports and services you have to go in and not ignore the diagnosis, but get to know exactly what that person's strengths are. Yeah. Um, what their strengths are as well. That's equally okay. as important, right? Okay. Um, but so somebody, um, you know, may, there might be some aggressive behavior um, in, in some people uh, who require enhanced special services. So in that case, they would have some other milestones to achieve before they were uh, set for the workplace, right? Got it. And that's milestones that they do with you yeah. in your organization. Yeah. Okay. Yep. At a so, time where you prepare them exactly. for that. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, so I imagine they'd have the very personal caseworker as well that they're used to working with, right? Yeah. Like a personal support worker, I imagine yep. for the for them, right? The, yep. So we have, uh, oh gosh, we have over seven hundred direct support employees yeah. uh, at the organization. So if somebody can't live independently on their own, that's where they're in one of our uh, twenty-four hour homes. Okay. So they get, you know, support around the clock. There's a staff team there. Uh, gets them out in the community. Yeah, helps them get to appointments, um, you know, connections, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and we work with, you know, other organizations to uh, really ensure that there are protocols in place mm. so that that person is supported in the way that uh, keeps them safe, keeps people around them safe, and will uh, you know, still help them achieve yeah. their goals, whatever their goals might be in the community. Um, whether it be, you know, any goals to travel somewhere. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of our role. So so shifting in the next phase of this, yep. your job, you're going out there and you're meeting businesses saying, hey, would you consider, mm -hmm. you know, we'd love to have these amazing people come and work here. So you, you're going to get a lot of pushback. Yes. A lot of pushback, right? Yep. Of, of because people are, it's, it's so unknown. So what are the frequently asked questions or the frequent pushbacks that, that that people automatically go to, like the top five, what are they? I know you probably hear the same ones yeah, every so, time. So, what, do people, what do people say right when you walk in, hey, I'm I'd like for you to employ a, a disabled person. Right. <laughs> so you say in a much better way, <laughs> but to that point, what do people say afterwards? Right, so yeah, Biggie is definitely, okay, we think somebody with a disability, accommodation, so right, from the get-go, we said accommodation. What do I have to? Right? Yeah. Is it, do okay. I have to change the anything? Physical do I have aspect. to board, buy different desks? Do I have to buy different things? Okay. Um, but that's where we assist employers as well. So the career compass team will go in, 
Um, as much as we want to get to know the job seekers we're connected to, we want to know the employers and mm -hmm. businesses we're working with, right? Yeah. So that we can kind of make those make those perfect matches. Mm -hmm. um, so we're support to employers as much as we are to the job seeker. We'll go in and um, you know offer suggestions. A lot of times, we can say, "Hey, we've got somebody that can that can do that." So you're not pulling somebody from over here to do this. So just I guess an example to to frame that we had. Uh, young man who had his driver's license okay. and uh, so there was a, a dealership that we worked with they had their mechanics moving the cars uh, once they were done working on it moving the cars running it through the car wash and parking it so that mm -hmm. customers can come and pick it up so we said well what if we had somebody that we support who has their license do that for the mechanics and the mechanics can just do the mechanic stuff and work on mm -hmm. the cars Create some efficiencies that way. Yeah. So that's those are kind of the opportunities that we look for. As Got well. it. Okay. Um, so the the tasks that could be taken away from someone who may have a more important task that still has to do right, any kind of like, like specialized go, education. Yep. Let's have that person focus okay. on that. The other stuff we can you know work with, and so job was created around that, and included some other duties of course as well. But that was kind of a, a really key piece to, yeah. to create some efficiencies for that business. So what other objections? Oh, uh, Give me more objections. Retention. What, what are people scared of? Retention. retention. Yeah. People okay. Like, oh, they're gonna, you know, call in sick all the time, or they're gonna quit after a little while, and that's okay. that's not true. Like statistics show that um, you know, people with disabilities are seventy two percent more likely to, to stay with the business. Again, because we're compared to someone without a disability. Right. Exactly. Seventy two percent. Seventy two. Say it one more time. Seventy two percent of disabled people yep. are more likely yep. to. To stay at a business yeah. more than... Yep. The retention rate is higher. Okay. The retention rate is 72% for people with a disability at a business. So, okay. They, again, so to, to dumb this down, if I had a company where only disabled people worked in it versus non-disabled people working in it, I would have 72% more retention in company with disabled people than it would with... That is a that is like the cool. Remember, let me take that clip and we're gonna then we gotta blast I can, that. I can everywhere. send the info. I can. Send oh my god! I want info. the data behind all that. I, I want to see it. it. That is that's a big number. Yep. That is a big number. Yep. And and also, and, I, and I think I'm gonna call out like yeah. I'm gonna call out someone who's not disabled. It's like, are you serious? Right. Like, is it is it that bad on the other side that we can't just commit to a job? Right. <laughs> like you know. And, yeah. Oh my God, um, <laughs> that's a huge number. It's huge. That's almost like double. It's a, it's almost with one company. Another company will have to turn over twice almost. Because if you're at 100, percent that means all your staff have left. Right. So you're just 25 percent short of all your staff leaving. Mm -hmm. You've replaced your whole company, and this first company is still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man. <laughs> again, again. Oh my God. <laughs> again, the people, oh. the people that we're connected to. <laughs> I'm changing my model working. completely. I'm, everyone's getting fired. There's been some. I can send <laughs> I some data. Doing... <laughs> oh there's, my a, God. there's a large company in the states that. Uh, oh my goodness. Has reworked their their entire like system. I'll, I'll have to send you the data. Oh God, that is incredible. That is my um, favorite thing I've heard of the few times that we've spoken about. That is insane. Where am I the only one blown away by this right now? Hey. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and that like. Again, the people that we're connected to are motivated to work. They're reliable employees. Yeah. There's a young lady that we're connected to, and I remember years ago, again, I've been around for a while, but I remember years ago when she got her first job, um, we were at an event in the community together, and she had said, she said something that, you know, kind of blew me away. She got her first paycheck, and she's like, I'm paying taxes, just like everybody else, I'm paying taxes. Oh my God, that's, so like, that's an eye-watering moment right there. Right? Yeah. So, so something like that is just, yep, no, I got taxed on my paycheck. Here it is, first paycheck. So she was so thrilled. So we've shut down the whole retention idea. It's like that's there's there's no debate there. Mm -hmm. There's no debate for to that obstacle. Right. Right. And the other piece too with the retention piece is that that's again what our team is for. Because we're workplaces change all the time. Yeah. So we go in, we provide that on site job coaching. Once an employer has hired somebody, we'll go in you know, support them to be successful, make sure the quality of work is there and work ourselves out of the jobs. Yeah. So we phase that coaching out, but it doesn't mean we're gone, right? We're going to check in with that job seeker, the person who's working there, um, just make, make sure things are good, right? Check in with the employer, yeah. see how things are going. Um, so that retention is 
going to be so there. How about how about this this objection? What about from like a culture perspective? Like what about just people being nervous about it? Like mm -hmm. if you came to me, yeah. me personally, I'm not afraid to put myself out there. Yeah. You came to me like a what, what do you think about having a disabled person here? I just I would be intimidated by the idea. Mm -hmm. Just pure intimidation of yep. your mind start racing. It's like, well, I don't know what if something happens. What if I got to take care of this person or, or like you know you kind of because it's so unknown. You it's like yeah. it's like going to going to swim in a lake and you can't see through. So you think there's like a million sharks around you when right. really there isn't, <laughs> right? So it's you just you're just intimidated by it. Yeah. How do you do? You, I imagine you see that a lot. Yeah. Of yeah. like I don't know. Will it kind of make things weird in the office? Like we've I've got a small team here. There's five of us. It's yeah. like you know. It's never pleasant seeing, you know, even just walking in downtown, you see a homeless person. It's not comfortable, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Anything mm -hmm. that's just different, yep. natural instincts in humans, we're just a little uncomfortable, right? Yep. Until yep. you get to know the person, get to really see, exactly. get used to it. Exactly. How do you, I imagine you see a lot of that. What's yes. the comfort around that? Because that's, that's for me, that's what I would need is, is everything else I get. That's the part where it's like, make me more comfortable with the idea. Absolutely, yeah, no, and that's something that we do as a team as well. Work with coworkers, work mm -hmm. with management, whoever, leadership, whoever we need to. And really, it all boils down to, um, they're just a person. Treat them how you would treat anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and on the flip side of that, there's been instances where new, like coworkers change all the time, managers change all the time. They didn't realize that that person had a disability. Mm -hmm. either so then we're having to go in and say well this is this is why they might be you know reacting this way or you know may not be aware of the different social cues um, that sort of thing mm -hmm. because that's part of their disability yeah uh, so that's so it's kind but, of but again so well. we touched on it too with yeah. the different types of disabilities to so someone like me who might be really like more on like the uncomfortable like really kind yep. of uncomfortable that yep. you'd say to me you know what, man? Like, you just need an assistant here. You, this, you can get, we can get you. There's an amazing person who has an IQ of less than 70, but you'd never even know it. Like, yeah. you know, just some referencing back what we talked about ahead of time, where the, the matchmaking that you would do, you would accommodate for exactly. You know, my comfort level, for example. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and really, just kind of say, you know, you just talk to them as if you would anybody else. And yeah. in certain instances there might be people where you have to be very direct with them. They might mm -hmm. not get sort of those um, little social intricacies. Um, yeah. Like they might not detect the the shift in the tone of your voice. Mm -hmm. You might not be able to tell when you're sarcastic or telling a joke, that kind of thing. So those are kind of supports that we would provide as well. So, so would we be able to do like an interview process where it's, yeah. you may have a oh, few absolutely. people and it's like, why don't yeah. I meet them ahead of time and let's really try to find it. Like absolutely. same thing, treat it as if I'm hiring for that's, a job, that's a don't change curve. nothing. Just here's a handful of candidates, interview them, pick the one that you like. That's what we encourage, absolutely. Yep, yep, hmm. so we'll make the match. We'll okay. look at a, a couple different candidates for the job, yeah. present them to the employer, and the, it's up to the employer to, to interview. We can be part of that interview as well, like just kind of in there and kind of support the person. We okay. don't understand the question. So you're a recruitment company as well. Essentially, yeah, we look we look right. at ourselves as an extension of the of, HR team, there you go. different employers okay. and businesses, and okay. and uh, yeah, try to try to match them to yeah. the job. Opportunity. Just just like a recruitment company that specializes yeah. in healthcare, you specialize in the disabled sector. Is that I, I, am I like well, butchering this? What's the, what's the right way of doing? It? I feel like I'm just so we sound see, like an idiot. No, <laughs> so so. We usually put the person first, so we'll yeah. say a person with disability or okay. that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, we work specifically in developmental services in that sector, um, and that's kind of our specialization. There's other organizations in Essex County mm -hmm. as well. Um, there's also they support people who have uh, like acquired brain injuries, right. that kind of thing. Um, CMHA they support people yeah. with mental health. Um, we all kind of work together, and we all kind of have our our specializations and uh, yeah. okay so nice so box. I'm going on this journey I'm a business owner and, and I've learned the different types of disabilities I've gotten more comfortable that I've given you my objections and, and you've is there by the way before we move on is there another really big objection you want to talk about that you want to uncover uh, yep uh, workplace safety okay that's tell all, me about that's, that's a big one especially yep. here with all the manufacturers here with yep um, the construction tell me tell me about that yep so that's always a concern um, and we've, there's data out there that supports that inclusive workplace and sorry inclusive workplaces are actually 32% um, 
safer because people with disabilities are very, you know, by the book. And it's like, no, we're not going to cut corners. So they're all about safety. Hmm. Um, yeah. Hmm. It's a long thing dedicated to, to the actual job. Yeah. I could relate to that personally. Be right. Because I'm the guy that's like, no, we could get around that. Like, we, you know. Right, that, exactly. That, that Walt Disney, we could just hop over. Like, I'm that, and I'm that guy. We've had instances, <laughs> I'm that guy. We've had instances where okay. people we support, tell their co coworkers, no, we're not going to do that. We have to do it this way. Okay. Right. right? And then the workplace are trying to cut the okay. corners. And so that's, uh, yeah. So you'd shut that down yeah. idea all day long. Yeah. And, and obviously with a balance, right? Like high paced manufacturing, right? You're not taking yeah. somebody who's blind and throwing exactly. them in an assembly line where there's forklift drivers going everywhere. Like you're matchmaking at exactly. the same time, yep. right? Like, yep. you know, you're, you're choosing, you, you know, you're, you're picking your poison in a way of, of who, who you're going to put where, right? Right. Yeah. Right? Yep. Exactly. You know, We're like, like anything, like, like even forget disabilities with, with any human being, you're not even, you're not going to take uh, someone with no experience of ever operating any equipment and throwing them to operate equipment. Exactly. They're going to kill somebody. Exactly. Right. Yep. So, yeah, much like you, I'm sure like looking at education experience yep. um, and then as well as the process, getting to know the person, mm -hmm. whatever their strengths are, taking all that into account and looking at the opportunities available for them. Okay. Perfect. Any other objections that you want to highlight over that's uh, very no, important? I think those are the biggies. Those are the, biggies. Those are the big ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So now I've gone on this journey. You've addressed every every objection. You've made me a lot more comfortable with it. So now it's like I'm in. I yep. want to get somebody. Yep. Um, what are the programs, incentives that are out there mm -hmm. that could make this an incredibly, not just an easy decision for a business owner or a mm -hmm. business, but also like whether it's a financially you know, a very good decision financially, mm -hmm. a bit, just a great business decision on top of the, the nice, the inclusive portion. We're past inclusive done. What about like from the money side, from yep. the business side, what do you, what's out there? Yep. The uh, support that's out there too. Yeah. So I guess in terms of, um, you know, support for businesses and employers, there is funding available for wage subsidies. Um, they're not permanent though. They're kind of a short term yep. thing. Um, we, for many years, have the philosophy that you know when we're, we're job coaching we're ensuring that person is committed the quality of work is there we're there to ensure that the person is comfortable with their job duties understands their responsibilities um, and we're that's your your team who's yes. coming in with them and helping with the training yes I want to emphasize so, on that so exactly. you've got your team physically coming to yep. our office Exactly. Introductions. This is where you're going to be. Let get everyone training. You know. We're there for the training to ensure the mm -hmm. person understands training. Wemis is everywhere, right? Yeah. Everybody's got to do Wemis, so we help out with uh, any kind of online training, anything like that. Reading policies, ensuring the person understands yeah. the policies that they're reading. We're there from day one mm -hmm. um, until they're working, and we phase ourselves out. Okay. Um, well, typically, what does that look like? A month, two months, uh, a few weeks, depends, depending on the person. Depends on the person. Yeah. Depends on the we person. Don't, we okay. don't really put a timeline on it. Okay. It all depends on the person, depends on the job, too, the okay. number of responsibilities. I imagine, too, the person that's there who knows this disabled person very well mm -hmm. is also training the people in the company. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, uh, it's, you're, someone's telling me, well, Derek is normally like this and you're mm -hmm. teaching me, okay, this is what, how you deal with Derek right, right, <laughs> during right. in yep, these exactly. scenarios. Yeah. So when yep. this person's gone, it's like, you're, it's really kind of yep. a training on both sides in, in an aspect I would imagine. Yep. Right. Yep. And always including the person there that, yep. that we're supporting the new hire, yep. including them in all those conversations okay. and, and saying, yep. this is how Derek does this and you know, that sort of thing. And when you're communicating with Derek, be direct. Um, okay. Derek okay. may need a little support and you know some the reading some of that stuff like that and and again what we do is um, look at ways to ensure that person is independent as possible it could be you know, different apps on their smartphone it could be reminders mm -hmm. you know, ensuring that we look at technology as well so okay. that they're not relying on people or mm -hmm. the job coach mm -hmm. um, so all that to say that job coaching is more effective than wage subsidies because it's longer, like we'll go back, workplaces change all the time, processes change all the time, mm -hmm. equipment changes all the mm -hmm. time. We're always available to go back okay. in to provide that service. So whenever whenever we need to think, say, hey, we've been having a hard time with, with, with Derek, can mm -hmm. 
and you send someone in exactly. to try to help us and they'll bring back the, yeah. is, it, is it a psw that comes is it a caseworker what's what type of person uh, Again, depending on the person i imagine but generally yeah yeah so it would it would be somebody on the career compass team for right. us and and they are direct support workers so they okay. they know how to work with people who have a developmental disability got it yeah okay yeah. now what about let's go on the other side is the benefits of being that inclusive business mm -hmm. what comes with that well so, socially and to the like is what, yeah by saying that you're inclusive now yeah what typically have you seen changes in a business when they do that yeah so um we get a lot of feedback from employers about how like the effects it's had on you know their team so there's this idea of reverse inclusion right where um by including somebody other people are getting to know this person and and the myths that they had, the biases that they might have had before are kind of getting dispelled, right? And mm. so they themselves are becoming more inclusive people, more open, right? Mm. Um, Which makes so much sense because now if I've gotten a friendship, if I've made a friendship with someone who has a disability mm -hmm. and I've gotten to learn about them, mm -hmm. That's now I'm, I'm extremely comfortable with it. Exactly. Now the next disabled is just, it's like, I'm so much more comfortable. I'm, I'm, I have the knowledge. It's kind of like knowledge is exactly. power type thing, right? Exactly. You, it's, uh, it's like anything new at first it's strange, but then you get used to it. And right. then now you know about it. not just get used to it, but you know of it and then you advocate for it. Right. So that's interesting. So you're saying the people within the company, their mindset all completely changes and yeah. you know, there's a push, push for it now. Exactly. And the mm. other piece too is people really like to support inclusive employers, right? Um, I think it's important for businesses and mm -hmm. employers to be a reflection of the community, the community that they're, mm -hmm. they're operating in. Um, and there are a lot of Ontarians that have a disability, right? Mm -hmm. So when they know that there's a, a workplace that's inclusive, they want to support that workplace. Mm -hmm. So there's an opportunity to, to increase revenue there. Um, so as much as possible, we try to highlight our inclusive employers that we work with um, on our social media is yeah. uh, October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month. So we try to highlight those employers in our community. Um, and we have an organization with over 700 employees. So internally, we try to encourage our employees to support the different businesses that, that we're connected to. We're going to do something in October for sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome to do that. But I think from this whole conversation, the one that stands out the most where if, if you weren't sold by anything, right? 72% more likely to have an increase in retention by 72%. Yeah. If you that's had, huge. that's the that's hands down. If, the, if there's any debate on that, yep. everyone talks about retention all the time. It's huge. Yep. 72% chance increase in retention. Mm -hmm. I, I want the stats. I'm going to send it out. I'm going to be talking send about that out. for the whole year. From now until October, I'm going to be. You have no, no idea how many times I'm going to mention that. That's awesome. Now, hey, that's, we that's appreciate that. Crazy. That's huge. That's I'll, insane. I'll send it and and at the same time, I'm going to call out everyone who's fortunate to not have anything wrong with them. Okay. I don't know if that was a politically right way of saying it, but let's just call it that way. Yeah. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on because because it's just we're so fortunate, so blessed to have our health. And are you kidding me? Like, like good for good for that crowd, right? For great right. for for the the people that have that stat, but that's a big number. Like, that's you know, thirty percent is like okay, we can you know sure, but seventy two percent, that's a big number. Yeah. Yeah. That is a big number. So everyone needs to work harder, and everyone needs to respect that. I think that's no, something that sure. is good for for that that crowd. Um, I'm actually so proud. That is that is awesome. That's a huge number. Yeah. Huge number. So, so let's just, I guess we could kind of end it that I want to do something with you in October. Amazing. Okay. We'd love that. Um, why don't you share maybe some, a little bit, how could people reach you if, and, and how can you help them? Maybe feel you end it off. Yeah. I'm done from my end. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Go ahead. No, absolutely. So yeah, if you think you're an employer that would be interested in hiring from Career Compass, um, we'd love to work with you. You can find us, uh, online on our website. Um, CL Community Living Essex.org. Um, you can find the Career Compass team on Facebook, Instagram, and X as well. You can send us a private message. Uh, myself, Derek Roy, you can give me a call. Uh, you can email me, droy at community living Essex.org. Um, and we'll set something up. We'll get the ball rolling. Thanks for having me, buddy. We're yeah, always no. in with a high oh, five or something. High five, yeah, we'll go ahead. That's all is it's all is done. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for watching our content. Listen, if you're running a business and you're struggling to find staff, 
I want to introduce myself. My name is Christian Saab. I own CPG Recruitment, and I help companies across North America find the people that they need to find. Listen, a great business cannot be built unless you've got great people. You and I both understand that having the right people on your team is so important, and that's where I could come in and help you. So listen, I want you to shoot me a text message. Here's my direct cell phone. Have my number. Reach out to me. I'd love to hear your story and get to know what you're trying to accomplish, and that way maybe I can help you fix this problem.